Alright, all you Streetlight Crusaders, and I guess a couple of you wrestling fans who are still up for tonight, welcome back to the 300th episode of the Tuesday Night Special. Man, I can't get over that. I keep saying that we've hit 300 episodes. It's really hard to believe. But besides my I cannot believe it's not butter realization that we've hit the tricentennial era for late night programming, I think it's time for us to talk about what happened during this week's edition of Monday Night Raw from the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. Which this will be the 300th episode of Monday Night Raw we will be reviewing as of tonight. Not bad. Not bad at all. And Monday Night Raw would kick off this week with none other than Randy Orton bragging about his win against Edge during the greatest wrestling match ever, not only talking about the fact that Edge suffered a torn tricep, but also would say that the fact that he won this match makes him the greatest wrestler ever, and then would go on to say that, hey, Edge, we could probably do this again next time and let's say another nine years after you heal. Because it would be revealed, according to Randy Orton, since now he's a doctor, it's going to take Edge nine years to heal from this injury. And after that announcement, Christian would come out to say that this is not the end of the chapter of Edge by the least bit and he will be back and he will be back for Randy Orton only for Randy Orton to say you're not out here for Edge you're out here for yourself cause I know you better than you know yourself you just want one more match and then would say that he challenges him later on tonight in an unsanctioned match and would say oh you could not accept the match and prove that you're a coward or you can face me in the ring later on tonight. Only for a Christian to contemplate throughout the entire night, getting advice from Hall of Famers such as Ric Flair and The Big Show, for a Christian to accept this match and go on to face against Randy Orton in the main event of tonight. Now, granted, we know we're going out of orbit with this, folks, but they've been delaying and delaying and delaying and telling you Ah, uh, will he, won't he? So we decide to cut to the chase. And with that being said, folks, the first match to take place for Monday Night Raw for this week would be none other than Kevin Owens going one-on-one -on -one against Angel Garza. And Angel Garza would vocalize his opinion about what happened at Backlash last night only for Andrade to come from out of nowhere while Selena Vega was wearing an outfit that sort of reminded me of something that Scarlett would wear during Mortal Kombat, only for Andrade to say on behalf of Angel Garza, good luck during your match. And during this match, would Angel Garza need luck? Why yes he would! Because Kevin Owens still remembering what he did to him three weeks ago and still wanting his revenge for what happened would come out the gate strong hitting him with chops, punches to the face, and then next thing you know, while this assault was taking place, next thing you know you would see Andrade hitting the scene and cheering on none other than Angel Garza at ringside. And would that end badly for Angel Garza? Why yes it would! Because right when Angel Garza looked like he was going to get some form of offense during this match, Andrade would hop up on the apron, distracting the referee long enough for Angel Garza to get hit with a KO stunner, for Kevin Owens to beat Angel Garza and get a little manner of revenge against the modern day Lothario via pinfall. And after the match was over, Angel Garza and Andrade would argue on the outside of the ring, much like they did during the match after Andrade tried to get him to go back in the ring, and only for Selena Vega to break it up by saying, you two both want the same thing, get on the same page, and just tell him to walk up the ramp. But it looks like there's a little bit of trouble in paradise. Yes, Maestro, we decided to go Kofi Kingston on that one, because that was the gimmick he started with when he first started with the company. I'm surprised not many people remember that. 
But besides all that, folks, the next thing to take place on Monday Night Raw would see a disappointed MVP and Bobby Lashley talking about how Lana just ripped the dreams out of Bobby Lashley's hands and called Drew McIntyre a coward and would say that if he had any sort of integrity, he would give Bobby Lashley a rematch tonight for the WWE Championship. Only for Lana to come out and to say, I'm sorry for what happened, we were on a hot streak, MVP is just being a leech, only for Bobby Lashley to pick up the microphone and say, you're just clinging on to me to be a little bit more famous than you already are, and trying to post our sex life on Instagram, and just trying to be with me to get a couple more likes on Instagram as well, or Twitter, or whatever website she posts on only for Lana to say, oh, if I wanted to be famous and if I wanted to sleep with somebody successful, I would have just slept with Drew. Only for Bobby Lashley to say, I want a divorce, for Lana to have that I just won the sweepstakes looks in her eye, and for Bobby Lashley and MVP to leave her in the ring stunned silent after she talked herself into a divorce. And what Samoa Joe said was important. The second divorce that Lana would have in less than eight months. <laughs> and Samoa Joe would say, oh, gee, she's racking up quite a pedigree now. <laughs> oh, man, you gotta love Samoa Joe on commentary. Really livens up the joint. But besides that future episode of Divorce Court that we're going to see on Monday Night Raw, most likely before Extreme Rules, the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw would see none other than the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders teaming up to go against Akira Tozawa and his army of ninjas. I kid you not when I say that, no it's not the Power Rangers, and no that's not the Putty Patrol according to what the Maestro told me last night after the show was over, but hey, during this match they would get the crap kicked out of them like if they were the Putty Patrol. Because next thing you know, you would see Eric hitting a nasty tiger knee to the face of one of these ninjas. And you would even see Eric picking up none other than Angelo Dawkins to actually slam him on one of the ninjas. And finally, this match will come to an end that again after a double slam in the ring. And not only a big splash to one of the ninjas by Air Ivar, and then a fog splash from the heavens from Montez Ford for a double pinfall in the center of the ring or the side of the ring where they landed for the Street Profits or the Viking Profits to win this match via pinfall. Only for Akira Tozawa to actually call upon his 7 foot ninja, for the Viking Profits to call upon the smoke to bring out none other than The Big Show. And the Big Show would come out and knock out all the ninjas only for the 7 foot ninja to walk away by orders of Akira Tozawa who now has a foot clan helping him out during this rivalry between the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits. Where Big Show would say next week on Monday Night Raw, you should settle this contest with a title match. Like what should have happened at Backlash, but only in the ring. Only for the Viking Prophets to agree, and then for them to go on to say, We want smoke. We want smoke. Or whatever way Big Show told them to sing it that has a 70s feel to it, along the lines of, We want the funk. Which it does. Good on Big Show for that one. And the next thing to take place on Monday Night Raw would see none other than the Monday Night Messiah confronting Rey Mysterio after Rey Mysterio would warn Seth Rollins that Dominic was in the arena looking for revenge, only to tell him that maybe Dominic should join our cause. Maybe he should fight alongside of us and help us try to change Monday Night Raw for the better, only for Rey Mysterio to say there's no way in the world that's going to happen, only for Seth Rollins to say either he could be a part of the problem or a part of the solution, and if he doesn't comply with us, he will be sacrificed just like you. 
only for Dominic to come from out of nowhere to stop all that rhetoric, to hit Seth Rollins from behind, knock him into the stairs, and then get surrounded by Murphy and Austin Theory, only for that Rey Mysterio quickness to kick in during that moment. Because not only he would be able to sidestep Murphy, jump over Austin Theory, and make his way to the other side of the ring, right to the back where the referees and the timekeeper were, and just run back to escape safely away from all of the noise that was going on in the ring. Only for Rey Mysterio to breathe a sigh of relief, and that Booyaka 619 music to hit loudly, and further taunt, none other than Seth Rollins after that wonderful attack. The kid's got a future in a business is ultimately what this says. And with that said, folks, we might as well head back into the music and when we return, we'll be back with the second half of what happened during this week's edition of Monday Night Raw from the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida as the Tuesday Night Special rolls on right after this. So don't fall asleep just yet, folks, and stay tuned. 